Okay, no, I'm actually pretty excited to give this a go. Let's try. Wow, that is some really good tea. I'm gonna have to keep you around here, Dalek. Oh, hey, R2, what's up? Oh, I understand being bored, especially playing chess with K9. I don't care who you are, 500 games is a lot. You're right, we really don't have too many spaceships around the Groove Builders headquarters, and I bet you, if we had one, you would be less bored. You know what, I got an idea. YouTube, welcome to Groove Builders. I'm Disorderly Cone, and in this episode, we're gonna be building one of the universe's biggest hunks of junk. Of course, I'm referring to the Millennium Falcon. Let's go ahead and take a look at the package on the workbench. Alrighty, Groove Builders, welcome to the workbench. Today we're working on the Millennium Falcon Force Awakens version of the kit. I must say this one looks pretty awesome and I can't wait to get started on it. On the very back, we have a depiction of what the Millennium Falcon will look like when we're all done, a look at what the metal's gonna look like when we open up the package, and some instructions on how to use the insertion holes and tabs. Now, at the very bottom, if we look really carefully too, you can see some information on future models that we're going to get a chance to build. Groovers, let's get started by ripping open this package here. The first thing we're going to see are the instructions, and then our metal. What looks really nice about this metal is they took the time to get the laser etching detail correct. I can't wait to see what this is going to look like when we're all done. On the instructions, we have this awesome QWERTY code here, which is going to give us that 360 view of the Millennium Falcon if we need it. Some instructions on how the insertion holes and tabs work, and how we need to fold things if we need them. Now when it comes to our circles here at the very top, we really want to make sure that we are taking our tabs and bending them over. With our triangles, we want to make sure we grab them and twist them for a nice, tight, secure connection. At the bottom, we have the very important parts diagram, which is listed out in numerical order so we can find our pieces very nice and easily. With our instructions here, we can see it's just one page, but don't let that fool you. Some of these models can definitely take a lot longer, especially with all the accessories we're going to be adding to the top and bottom. Let's start with piece number one. First, grab the tabs that will be completing our cone-shaped hull and bend them 90 degrees. Then, go around the piece, slightly bending it towards the center. As you do this, the ends will get closer, allowing you to insert the tabs into the insertion holes. Lock them in place nice and tight, and then go around the cone, trying to smooth out any imperfections that may have developed. With our main hull shape complete, we can grab the pieces two, three, and four from our metal sheet. Start by taking piece number three and bend the fold lines 90 degrees. After forming a three-sided box, attach it to piece number two. Ensure to pull and twist these tabs as tightly as you can. Then, grab piece number four and shape a circular bend to create a border for piece number two. I use my mandrel for an even consistent bend, but you can really use anything you have around your home that might be cylindrical. After attaching the border, ensure to bend the tabs flush from piece 4 onto piece number 2. This will be the top turret for the Millennium Falcon. Pieces 5 and 6 are built very similar to one another, so to save time, I'm going to show you only one of them. Grab piece 5 and bend it by its fold line 70 degrees on each side. Then, put it aside and repeat this process for piece 6. Next, it's time to form the satellite dish for the Millennium Falcon with pieces 7 and 8. Start by bending the center tabs in piece 7 90 degrees towards the engraved side. Fold the end connecting border tab 90 degrees. Similar to our hull, slowly begin to shape the dish until the tab reaches the insertion hole. Then, lock it into place, ensuring a very nice, tight fit. With piece 8, fold both sides back 90 degrees by their fold lines. Next, grab the dish and ensure the tabs that were bent 90 degrees earlier in the center are formed correctly to allow the connection of piece 8. Secure this very tightly. With our pieces all constructed, it's time to gather them all together and begin attaching them to the main upper body. Starting with pieces 5 and 6, I suggest bending the tabs 90 degrees on the one side to aid with easy insertion. Secure the tabs with a pull and twist, then repeat this process for the other side.
With 5 and 6 secured, we can attach the top turret. Make sure the tabs are going into the insertion holes and not the center hole. Then twist and pull the tabs. Now we can grab the satellite dish and attach it to the main body with a twist and pull. With the first part of our upper hull done, we can work on the cockpit and a few other accessories, starting with piece number 9. Fold the piece along the fold lines on each side. Then bend the ramp down in order to line it up with the edges of the borders. With piece 10, go around the outer tabs and bend them 90 degrees. Let's move on to the cockpit. Start by bending piece 11 over a long cylindrical object. I use my mandrel for a nice even bend. Once you have achieved the desired tube shape, remove it from the mandrel and connect the cockpit tab first. Now we can begin to form the cockpit by pushing in on the windows matching the borders along the sides. Once we've ensured there's no gaps, fold over the center cap to complete our cockpit. Okay, let's grab our pieces and attach them to our Millennium Falcon, starting with piece number 9. I recommend pre-bending one side of this piece's tabs 90 degrees to aid in the easy construction. When securing the next few pieces, it's important to ensure you're folding the bottom tabs and twisting the top ones closer to the turret. Part number 10, this should go on pretty simply because we pre-bent those tabs earlier. Don't forget to fold the bottom tabs and twist the top ones closer to the turret. The cockpit is secured by four tabs to the upper part of the ship. If you're having trouble with this particular step, it's important to remember to pre-bend the tabs and if you need to, you can go and work each individual tab carefully with your tweezers. All three pieces of step 12 are formed the same way. Fold the left and right side 90 degrees. Once complete, we can attach the pieces from underneath securing the tabs with two folds. Great! Now we can do this two more times. After cutting out piece 13, we can start to bend the tabs along the base of our hull 90 degrees. Carefully insert the tabs from our hull into piece 13, making sure to use the proper holes. Secure the two pieces together by bending all of the tabs. Step 14 has us bending four small pieces all the same way. Grab each side of a small piece and bend them 90 degrees. You might need to form these pieces with your fingers because of their small size. Attach them to the rear of the hull, one by one, securing them with a fold. These pieces can be a little tricky to secure. If you're having a hard time, try bending one tab as far as you can to one side and repeat it for the other tab. Then, push the two tabs flush against the hull. Be careful not to squish the pieces though. Now we can begin work on the lower part of the Millennium Falcon. Let's go ahead and cut out all the pieces that we're going to be needing for our first few steps. Let's start by grabbing piece number 16. Bend both sides of this part 90 degrees, being careful to grab the little bits of metal at the far ends. For the next few steps, you might want to use something bigger than your typical pair of tweezers. Part 15 is very similar to 16, except with an added cap. Bend both sides first, then line up the cap with the border. With both pieces bent correctly, let's put 15 and 16 together, making sure to have the tapered corner ends pointing towards the cap of piece 16. Twist these tabs nice and tight. Step 18 comes with two parts that are built the exact same way. Make sure to bend these sides the same way we built pieces 5 and 6, being careful to grab all the metal when you bend. 
Now let's start to form our lower hull. Start by bending the tabs 90 degrees, then start to slowly form the piece. Once the tabs can be fit inside of the insertion holes, secure them with a bend. We can add pieces 15 and 16 now to the hull, making sure that we twist the top tabs and bend the lower ones. Parts from step 18 are secured on the left and right hand side of our hull. Make sure to pre-bend these tabs to aid in easy insertion. I accidentally bent these tabs, but make sure you make a good twist on all four of them. All secure, let's move on. We will be working with parts 19, 20, and 21. Let's grab part 19 and bend the bordering fold lines 90 degrees. Make sure to line the bends up together for a very nice finish. Part 20 and 21 are formed by bending the three sides 90 degrees. Then with a good grip, grab the extended metal and bend it to close the piece. Let's put it all together. Part 19 is inserted along the backhand side of the hull. Make sure to twist the side tabs and bend the back ones. Then 20 and 21 are secured on the left and right hand side of our hull with a nice firm twist. Time to get our stand ready. For this we will need parts 4, 22, 23, 24, and 25. Starting with part 22, let's bend the left and right fold lines. Then slightly bend the center with your thumb. With the part 23 in hand, insert the front tab first, then the right and left side. By doing this, you should form the front end almost automatically. Secure all the tabs with a nice flush bend. Just like before, bend part 4 into a cylinder shape. Once you're happy, insert it into the backhand side of part 24, and secure the tabs with another flush bend. Our final piece of the stand is part 25. Start by bending the left and right hand sides back while holding your tweezers in the middle. This will make for a nice square bend. Secure the back tabs with a good flush bend. Make sure you're square and then bend the turret guns up. We can now attach our stand to our base. Make sure to really pull and twist these tabs. We want our Millennium Falcon to be stable and not wobbling when we're done. Line up the insertion holes on part 24 with the top part of 25 and secure with a firm twist. We have completed our stand, let's attach it to our hull. Line up the insertion holes and secure the tabs with a tight twist. Now, let's get parts 26, 27, 28, and 29. With all of our pieces cut out, grab the lower hull and bend the outer tabs 90 degrees. Then, grab parts 26 and slowly work the tabs in their insertion holes, securing them with a bend. Take careful note of where the tabs are supposed to be going. Part 27 is formed along the rear of the Millennium Falcon. I recommend using the insertion holes to help you bend this piece properly. Secure the lower tabs with a bend. Let's start work on the border pieces of 28 and 29. Starting with 28, slowly form the piece using its bend lines. If you need to, you can double check the diagram to help you with the formation. Secure the tabs with a nice flush bend. We repeat this same process for part 29. All right, group builders, we're in the home stretch. Let's grab all of our pieces for steps 30, 31, and 32. With our pieces cut out, let's connect the upper hull. Slowly push the tabs into place using your tweezers to push them in if you need to. Just be careful not to scratch the metal. Secure the pieces together by bending the tabs with a nice flush bend. Now let's grab piece 31 and make a cylinder. I would recommend a sharpie if you don't have a mandrel for this part. Then attach it to part 30 with a firm twist. Let's go ahead and do the other one too. 32 goes on the ends to form a cap. Make sure to take these tabs and bend them flush to the cap. With our two parts constructed, we can now add them to the Millennium Falcon on either side, securing them with nice tight bends. All right, Groove Builders, we did it. We built ourselves the Millennium Falcon. And right now, R2 and K9 are working extremely hard to finish up the hangar where we're going to be putting all of our future spaceships and other really, really big items. But that's another video. 
Right now, let's go ahead and talk about the Millennium Falcon. Let's start with construction difficulty. The Millennium Falcon has been covered through many different brands of metal models, and the reason for this is because it's often one of the first models people pick up when they're getting into the hobby. That's a good thing, because the Millennium Falcon is one of the easier models to build, with only a few little tricky parts in it. One of them being the upper and lower cones. Those cones can be a little bit difficult because of the laser etching that exists in them. When you're trying to make that little cone, it will often crease in those laser etching spots. My suggestion is to go ahead and pre-bend those tabs to create almost a locking mechanism once you get them into the insertion holes. Then go back with your thumbs and try to level out those areas. Of course, another tricky part would be the cockpit itself. My recommendation is to take your time and look ahead in the instructions and don't forget that there's one particular tab and insertion hole that needs to go within the cylinder. Of course, that's the one that's attached to the cockpit. Again, just take your time, go slow, and don't forget to look ahead in the directions to know where you're going. Let's move on to build time. The Millennium Falcon took me about an hour to build. However, I do expect new builders to take a lot longer than this. Groovers, it's really important to take your time when you're building these models because once you're done building them, there's nothing more to do. You really want to make sure you get that nice museum quality model at the end, like they promise you on the package. The last thing you want to do is rush this model and bend the piece improperly and possibly break something. Take your time, Groovers. It's worth it. All right, Groove Builders, that brings us to the end. I had a great time building the Millennium Falcon with you, and if you guys had a good time, don't forget to press that like button. For more videos like this, hit subscribe as well. We got all kinds of really cool videos coming out in the future. Until next time, Groove Builders, keep, keep building. K9, what was that?